Figuring out camera height above the water at the beach. A detective story plus a Ronco bonus. This video starts with images from uh, Nathan Oakley, uh, taken from a video by Sleeping Warrior, and I am grateful for their uh, their imagery. So this is one of the, uh, the segments, one of the, the uh, photographs. This is taken from 4 minutes 26 seconds. Uh, he mentions you can see there are people paddling in the water. And the question is, how high is the camera above the water? So in the Flat Earth debate, um, there's a lot of uh, discussion about uh, viewer height and curvature and obstruction. And so there's a nice uh, calculator over at GitHub, which doesn't use any refraction, treats the Earth as a mathematically perfect sphere with no atmosphere, no physics. And then there's a more extensive calculator at Metabunk, and it has uh, calculations ignoring refraction and then calculations with standard refraction. But the important thing is that they both start with eye height. You, you have a distance and you have an eye height or a viewer height or an observer height. And if you get that observer height wrong, well, your calculations can be significantly off, okay? So the viewer height is critical, so that's really the whole point to this video is to hope uh, to help uh, help you make a better better estimate for viewer height. So with this picture, we have these little people and uh, they're kind of fuzzy. We don't really know if they're, you know, their age or, or their size and uh, we, we really need some help. So we're going to be looking at the horizon. We're going to talk about the horizon a lot. And so we need to figure out the sight line to the horizon. Now there's a couple of possibilities. Some flat earth folks say the horizon rises to eye level. So our sight line to the horizon is literally horizontal. Other flat earth folks acknowledge that the horizon is three miles away for a six foot observer. So we're gonna run the numbers for that. And then of course the globe earth folks say the horizon is three miles away, but they use uh, earth curvature. So we'll run the numbers again. So let's, uh, let's explore number two. So we're gonna start with a, a flat earth believer who sees the horizon three miles away. And like the beach looked really flat, um, so you can't really tell, um, but we've got the Earth, the, flat, the Earth is flat, the horizon is three miles away, we got a six-foot observer standing at the water's edge. We really want to figure out what is his perception of the horizon. Does he perceive it at eye level? So let's make a triangle. Now this triangle looks ridiculous, but that's because it is three miles long and six feet tall. Okay, so it definitely is not to scale, but that will help us at least draw the, the angles. So we have an angle of depression, that means we're look, looking below eye level. And so we're going to do some trig. To help us out, we have the Queen Princess of Trigonometry, Sokotoa. And the TOA in her name it stands for tangent is opposite over adjacent. So there's the opposite and adjacent. And then we plug that into the tangent formula and we take the inverse tangent or the arc tangent and we calculate theta to be two hundredths of a degree. So here's a question. What does a skilled builder, even somebody with decades of experience, what does every single skilled builder carry in his toolbox? A level. That's because he can't trust his eye, all right? Even though he's like holding the lumber, he's inches from the lumber, he still can't trust his eye. So somebody standing at the beach, will he be able to perceive something that's different from eye level? Um, and, and the answer is it's gonna look like it's eye level. It's, the horizon will look like it's eye level. Even though the angle of depression might be uh, two hundredths of a degree if the Earth were flat with a three-mile horizon. All right, so there's that purple line, which is looking really, really pretty darn horizontal. All right, so just to illustrate this uh, in, in my slideshow, this purple arrow is 1,875 pixels long, and if you drop the arrowhead less than a pixel, seven-tenths of a pixel, then that would simulate your sight line. So what about observers further up the beach? For example, a 12 foot elevation. So let's say the tide goes out. All right, so now we're 12 feet above the water. What now? Well, let's run the numbers again. It turns out that the horizon is uh, about four and a quarter miles and the angle of depression is three hundredths of a degree. And then lastly, what about those globe believers? So again, they don't believe the earth is flat. So we can't, this triangle is not good enough because we have curvature drop. And the curvature drop is measured from a line or from a projection that is tangent to the sphere. So you take the line the guy's standing on, that's the tangent line, and then you have to drop six feet from that, which means a total drop from eye level of 12 feet. This is a ridiculous triangle, right? But if we actually run the numbers and calculate it, 
we get it to be four hundredths of a degree. Okay? Again, this purple line is going to be looking horizontal. It's essentially looking horizontal. So the entire rest of this video, we're going to assume that this line is, is really it's indistinguishable from horizontal, even though it's actually looking down slightly. So the angle of depression, it might be zero, it might be two hundredths, it might be four hundredths. We're, we're, we're going to treat it as, as being pretty much horizontal, pretty close to horizontal. All right, so what is our challenge? The challenge is to find something in the water at the water's edge that intersects our sight line to the horizon. So here's an example. Here's a uh, lifeguard chair. And if you knew the dimensions of that chair, you kind of see where the horizon kind of cuts across between those rungs. Unfortunately, this is not a good example because the chair isn't actually touching the water. So we really need to find something that's touching the water where we can measure. And that's what we're gonna try. So how about this? A, um, maybe the guy's taking a low angle photo. Maybe he's got a camera strap of a, of a surfer, but clearly the guy's feet are in the water. And so all we have to do is measure that. So maybe the camera height is maybe three feet above the water. All right, what if we get down really, really close to the water? Does it still work? So let's take a look at this image. So if you take a look, where's the horizon comparing to the, the, the water level on, on the sky? It's inches, it's like, that's maybe two inches. And so you may say, well, how can you get the camera just two inches above the water? Well, it turns out the camera was actually in the water. Uh, they call this a halfie when it's like half submerged. Um, so I just made up a couple images. I sort of faked them a little bit just so you can illustrate this. So again, for each image, you measure that height and that's that'll give you the camera height above the water. All right. What if the horizon is way over the person's head? Well, you can kind of do a little post processing and stack stack them up. All right. So maybe this woman is five feet, you know, from the, her ankles to the top of her head because again, her ankles are what's in the water. Uh, and so I'm gonna estimate this is maybe nine feet, all right? So now let's get back to, uh, to this imagery, the imagery where the people were, were paddling in the water. So again, the, the horizon, the horizon's over their head, but we don't really know, we don't really know how big these people are. Are these people adults or are they children? And you know, we really don't know their dimensions. Now, fortunately, we are given a great clue and I, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, Sleeping Warrior, he had the camera on the sand and then he picked it up and he had the camera five feet higher and he took images both times. So at four minutes, 58 seconds, he took this image and then um, at five minutes, 16 seconds, he lifted the camera five feet higher. You could see the horizon changes. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that he didn't change the zoom. So I, I'm lining up these um, sort of geographic features and the features all line up perfectly. So these two images, I, I'm comparing apples to apples. They're at the same level of zoom. So then we can put these images side by side and kind of sort of measure a metric. So we got one where the camera's on the sand, the other where the camera's five feet higher. So what I did is I measured the height of the horizon above their heads uh, when the camera was on the sand. And then I'm carrying that over and, um, and I'm finding like sort of the delta. If the, if the camera is five feet higher, then the, that difference is five feet. Then I carry that five feet, and I sort of use that five feet as a ruler. And I can compare it to the original image where the camera was on the sand. And I could duplicate it, and it looks like I'm going a little bit too far, so I wouldn't call that 10 feet. But my estimate would be that we're at nine feet elevation above the water. So when the camera was sitting on the sand, it was actually nine feet elevation above the water. All right, and that goes back to the original video, the original frames of, these, of this video where, um, where the camera is on its uh, sand tripod. So that ends our detective story with that imagery, but there's more. So anybody who's familiar with my channel know that I'm all about tools, calibrating them, uh, using them in a rigorous manner, um, trying to make careful measurements, you know, not, not just casually slapping together things, but really carefully, carefully making measurements. So building your own tools and then actually calibrating them. And that's really what I'm gonna have you do with the Shaw tool. So I'm gonna introduce to you the Shaw tool, signaling height above the water. And why do I use the word signaling? Well, all the other tools that I have people make, you actually hold them in your hands. 
But this tool, you're not gonna hold in your hands. You're gonna be using it to signal from a distance. So like surveyors, they use telescopes to uh, focus in on each other. This guy, you can measure actually feet and inches. Sometimes they just use colored bands. Um, but these colored bands are, are carefully calibrated so they know exactly, exactly the measurements that they're talking about. So that's essentially what the Shaw tool is gonna be. And all you need is a couple Mylar balloons, an empty two liter bottle, some string, and something to measure with. So the, the, what we're starting with is a two liter bottle that you're gonna half fill with water. So that gives it about 2.2 uh, pounds. So that's, that's a heavy weight. It's not gonna blow away, but it will float very, very nicely. Then you have about two feet of string and you attach a Mylar balloon. And I say about two feet because we'll calibrate it in a few moments. And then to that, you're gonna have a, another piece of string exactly three feet. So notice that the, the three feet, the red string goes from the bottom of one balloon to the bottom of the other. That, that gives you a, a nice delta of three feet. So then how are you gonna calibrate it? So with the thing standing up, you want the middle of the Mylar balloon to be exactly three feet above the water level. So however you can do the, the adjustments, either you know, tying a knot around the, the top of the two liter bottle or using a piece of tape or you know, whatever, you, whatever you can do, make sure you calibrate that so that is exactly three feet above the water level. And then the other one, since you used an exactly uh, three feet piece of string, then that should be three feet as well. So we end up with a, uh, a tool or a, that you just throw in the water, right? You just throw it in the water and we now have three feet and six feet above the water. So I would say toss it in the water near the shore. So what happens if you toss it in the water? What's the camera height? I would estimate that at about four and a half feet. Now, what if it's a windy day? So here you may say, well, the camera height's three feet because the horizon is intersecting the three foot balloon. And I'd say, well, in post-production, why don't you draw some lines that are perpendicular to the string and then simply rotate them around and you'll see that the horizon is actually below the three foot mark. I would estimate that to be maybe around two and a half feet. All right. So my challenge is to you, I've got a couple of them. One is if you can find reference objects in a beach photo, you might be able to uh, d discern using your detective skills, uh, the observer height. And the second one is if you're planning on going to the beach, if you're planning on taking photographs of the beach, especially for the purpose of the flat earth debate, uh, please make and use a Shaw tool. All you gotta do is just throw it in the water and then photograph it and you'll be able to figure out really, really uh, close to what the exact observer height is. You don't have to worry about tides, you don't have to worry about sand. Um, it just, it's, it's like a self-working tool. So I think the, the credo for the, the shape of the earth debate should be to take careful measurements and make up your own mind. So here's a to-do list for you, dream big, Work hard and be kind. Thank you.